And joining us on the phone line is our NBA contributor, Steve Novak, an 11-year NBA veteran, an outstanding three-point shooter. You remember him from his time here as a Nick. Um, Steve, thanks for joining us. Oh my gosh, so good to be on with you guys. There's no better way I'd rather wake up, so I appreciate you guys having me. And Steve, let me tell you, man, uh, we haven't had a lot of special Knicks teams in my adult history, but you were definitely a part of one of my favorite Knicks squads in the early 2010s. We were winning games, Linsanity, Carmelo Anthony. I mean, it was electric in the city when you were out here hitting those discount double checks. So I got to get your opinion, man. Like, what was it like being a part of a winning New York squad while playing for the Knicks? Because it's very different than other cities. That was the first thing I think I realized was New York was so different than any other city. And to be honest, playing on the stage of MSG was something you dreamt about. And you know but New York is the basketball capital of the world. But to have done it at MSG with Carmelo Anthony, Jeremy Lin came out and emerged. And the building was just was electric it really was special i think driving into games we would live out in westchester by the practice facility was kind of a magical experience that you can't really get when you live in milwaukee you live in indiana yeah those are big time basketball cities as well but there's nothing like driving into manhattan and playing basketball at the garden and going to dinner with your teammates afterwards so it was special and obviously like you said winning and the great teammates i had tyson chandler jr smith Mello was playing his best were those are some special days. Um, man, I, I have chills thinking about some of the things that you guys accomplished as a team. Now, listen, Steve, in 2011 and 2012, you led the NBA in three-point field goal percentage. My fantastic partner this morning said something completely ridiculous in that <laughs> he would like to see the entire court expanded so that the corner three is deeper and possibly a four-point line. Please tell Kaz that he is out of his mind, Steve. <laughs> come on, come Kaz, on. Kaz, I was loving come on. all your discussions. <laughs> Fadeaways and the easier shots. And like you're saying, the, the, the three-point line, it, it may sound crazy, but the truth is to think that there are closer spots on the three-point arc than there are on others is a bit crazy. It seems like the three-point line was actually <laughs> retrofitted to the size of the court instead of the court being big enough for the three-point line. So, Kaz, I don't think you're crazy. As a three-point shooter who benefited hugely from having Thank you. corner Thank you. a little bit closer. That's all I wanted to hear. But hold on now. That's I, all I, I wanted to hear. As a shooter who benefited Hush, from Kaz, having I can't the corner a little closer. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I'm all in on I'm all in on leaving it closer for my own personal benefit, but I'm understanding where you're coming from, Kaz. If it gets deeper, guys are getting better. I, I would expect that to certainly be a possibility. <laughs> wow, Steve. Mm -hmm. I, I thought we had some symmetry as as shooters. I'm just gonna <laughs> sit here now and just I'm just, I'm just gonna sip my tea after 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 that one. Uh, matter of fact, mm. whatever. So I'm not I'm not letting Kaz have this moment. I don't care. All right, let's go to present day. 2020, Steve, the season is set to restart, or it appears to be set to restart on December 22nd. There's obviously been conversation about the short turnaround. The Milwaukee Bucks, an organization that you now work for, a team that was in the bubble, didn't stay till the end of the bubble, but obviously did play it after March. Um, just in general, what are your thoughts? What's the vibe like around the NBA community as we prepare to look ahead to the 2020-21 season? You know, basketball right now is certainly in a realm that it's never been before. Coronavirus was absolutely crazy in terms of what an NBA season looks like. There was a four and a half month break while coronavirus was in its worst stages. And then 22 of the teams came back and eight of them didn't. So there are some teams that to today haven't played in eight months. And if the season resumes, it'll be 10 months before teams like the New York Knicks have actually even played a game. So I think players, coaches, obviously fans are so excited for whenever the science and whenever the, the medical says it's safe to go back, we can do this again, not in a bubble. I think everybody is really eager to get back. And so I think the, the possibility of a Christmas start because Christmas is such a basketball day, um, it would be so special to get games back for the entertainment of the country. I think as a player, I played on Christmas, but as a fan, every year that I didn't play, I watched basketball, and so I do think, you know, 
basketball is a, a wonderful thing for bringing people together. And Lord knows we need some of that right now. Bring some people together, watch some hoops, celebrate Christmas. So I hope the sooner the better. And it looks like the players and the owners um, all have that interest. Now, Steve, you, you've made a lot of great points, especially about the excitement and especially a lot of, uh, you know, people being excited for the season to get started. But like you said, you are, you are in Milwaukee. You do work for the Bucks. And I don't know if excitement is the word I'd use for, for what's going on over there. There's a little trepidation because Giannis Antetokounmpo, two-time MVP, has, you know, the, the, there's possibilities that teams are going to go after him. There's possibilities that Milwaukee's going to offer the Supermax. What is the feeling like in Milwaukee, man? Because I'd be nervous if I were you guys. I personally do not think that Giannis is staying, but... What, what's, read the tea leaves for me. What's going on in Milwaukee? What do you think is going to happen with Giannis and the Milwaukee Bucks going into this next season? No, it, it's a really big deal. I was in the league when LeBron was deciding to stay in Cleveland or to go to Miami, and it had a huge impact on Cleveland. And so I think this is really very similar to, to that situation. And so in Milwaukee, no one's even paying attention to the election. We don't care Biden, Trump. We could care less. <laughs> All we care about is Giannis Antetokounmpo going to resign because – he is our president. This guy is the best player in the league, two-time MVP. Milwaukee will go as Giannis goes. And so will he sign a five-year, $253 million deal? Will he, uh, I'm sorry, five, yeah, five-year, 250 Will he sign just a two-year deal like you've seen LeBron, Anthony Davis do? I think he may end up, my opinion, going with a two-year deal only because it seems to me to be a better business deal for him as a player. Five years, I think, gives the team the comfort to know he is going to be there and they can kind of do whatever they want if he signs a two-year deal not only does he stay with the milwaukee bucks sign at the highest dollar amount that he can for those two years but he also has the power to say bucks you must continue to get better i'm the mvp of the league but mm -hmm. you must continue to build around me or i have the flexibility to leave so it's it's a big deal and you're right he, the milwaukee bucks are not the only team trying to trying to obviously the bucks trying to keep him but New York Knicks, Golden State Warriors, all these other teams you hear about. Uh, he is a, a prize to be had right now. Word? Knicks, Knicks, Knicks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, don't get me excited. I'm like, wait, word, 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 really? word. I'm with Kaz. I was totally ready to lean in on that, but I'm not going to say anything for, you know, for saying the wrong things, but I like the sound of that for sure. <laughs> okay, Steve, we've got a little game to play with you. The game is called No Fact. Or fiction. Get it? No facts, so no back. Uh -huh. It's, uh -huh. <laughs> it's going to help Kaz and I and our listening audience uh, decipher what is true and what is false about the great Steve Novak in a little game form. All right, first one. Prior to playing in the NBA, Steve Novak was a valet parker, perhaps the world's tallest, but he was a valet parker. Is this no fact or fiction, Kaz? Uh, I am gonna guess a no fact? Is this a no fact? I agree with Kaz. I'm voting no fact because otherwise, who comes up with that? <laughs> you guys are right. That's a no fact. Although, I always had to have someone working with me because, you know, when a little Porsche pulls up or a little two-seater, I would look at my partner and say, hey, <laughs> this is all you. I'll wait for the Hummer or the big SUV to come up and I'll park it, but this one... The leg room, it's all you, but this is a no fact. That's hilarious. All right, here we go. Next one. You named your son Mac after your favorite dish as a kid, which was mac and cheese. I'm going fiction on this one. I'm I'm going to guess fact because I know Kobe was named after his dad's favorite steak. So there's precedent there to be named after your favorite food. Novak, I would like to know, is it a no fact or fiction? This one is actually fiction. However, I did name my son Mac, but it was not because of the dish mac and cheese. <laughs> I named him Mac because when I realized that not only did Mac Novak sound good, but if I named my son Mac, I got to be the Mac daddy for the rest of my life. <laughs> All right, so if you, if you did get to name your son after your favorite food, what would his, what would his name really be? Oh, my God. Well, you know, I guess I just sort of felt like pepperoni pizza wasn't really an appropriate name for my son. So I left that alone. <laughs> wow. 
Well, Mac Daddy, we have one more. Wow, I don't know if I can say that. Let's take, let's take, let's take that back. It's a family back. show, brother. See what I mean? Family show. I take that back. Look at Max <laughs> Dad. Here we go. Last one. <laughs> Such a mess. Okay. Um. All right. The last one. Uh, Steve Novak in college, or not in college, just in general, I guess, made sixty-eight free throws in a row. I'm going total. No fact. I'm going to go fiction because I do remember him going on a free throw run. I don't know if it was 68 in a row, though. So I'm going to go fiction. Steve, bless me. What's the, what's the answer? Kaz, come on. There was one thing I did really well. It was shoot the ball. This is a no fact. Come on. Of course I made 68 in a row. I kind of thought I was going to I would have I would have went 88. <laughs> See, Fair you enough. know what, Steve? This just proves my theory today that I'm learning that Kaz apparently was a terrible shooter because he can't identify <laughs> with other shooters, wants to change lines, and all this ridiculous thing. So, yeah. <laughs>